Hello, it's Dr. Mike here again with another video on medical 3D printing. In this video, we're going to learn how to take a DICOM-based medical imaging scan, such as a CT scan, and convert it into an STL file in preparation for 3D printing. We will use the free open source software program OSIRIX to do this. Once the file is converted into STL format, we will use the free software packages Blender and Mesh Mixer to prepare the file for 3D printing. This tutorial is designed primarily for Macintosh users since OSIRIX is a Macintosh only program. If you use Windows or Linux, please stay tuned for my upcoming tutorial on 3D Slicer uh, to create medical and anatomic models on these operating systems. If you haven't already done so, please see my tutorial on selecting the best medical scan to create a 3D printed model. If you haven't already, please download the DICOM image set that we will be using in this tutorial. A link has been included in the video description. The data set is from a high quality CT scan of the brain and skull. It has been anonymized and has been put in the public domain for research by the U.S. National Cancer Institute. Also included in the download packet are other files that we will be using for this tutorial, including the final STL file of the skull. The download is free for members and registration for membership is also free and only takes a minute. In the Macintosh Finder, navigate to the folder with the downloaded tutorial file pack and double click on the file tcga 06 5410 sharpzip this will decompress the DICOM dataset. Then launch OSIRIX. Once OSIRIX is open, go to the File menu, click Import, and select Import Files. Then Navigate to that folder that was decompressed. It should be a folder name with a lot of numbers, starting with a 1-3-06. Select it and click Open. OSIRIX will ask you if you want to copy the DICOM files into the OSIRIX database. Select Copy Files. OSIRIX will then begin to copy the files into the database. A progress bar will be shown in the lower left hand corner and the new data set uh, will be shown in the list of uh, imaging studies with a orange circle and a plus sign in it. Uh, this circle will stay orange until OSIRIX has finished analyzing it, but you can go to that while it's still working and start to work with it. You'll see in this bottom left hand nav uh, area that there is a new image set called Fiducials 1.0 SPO COR 216 images. This is a coronal CT scan of the brain with images in one millimeter slice thickness. Double click on this. OSIRIX will remind you that you're not supposed to be using this particular version that I have, which is the 64-bit version, for uh, reading of uh, clinical scans. But I'm not doing that today, so I'll say I agree. And then the scan will open. Use the mouse wheel or the bar on the top of the imaging study to scroll back and forth through the scan. You can see that this is a pretty decent CT scan of the head for 3D printing. There is not very much artifact from dental imp implants because the teeth have been cut off down here. So the teeth in the maxilla and the mandible or the jawbone has been cut off. We can measure the density of the bony structures using the region of interest or ROI tool. This measures the Hounsfield density or CT density of the target area. Select the oval tool from the drop down menu. Choose a region of bone using the oval tool and the left mouse button. I'm going to choose this region in the skull. A variety of information uh, points are displayed. What we're interested in is this mean, which says mean 1753.194. This is the 
Hounsfield attenuation of this bony structure. Let's use the ROI tool to select an area in the brain. You can see that the mean here measures 1059. If we select an area outside the brain in the air, we get a measurement of 38. In this scan, uh, these Hounsfield numbers have been increased by a factor of about 1,000. Typically, air on a CT scan measures negative 1,000, soft tissue between 30 and about 70, and bone greater than 300. So if we subtracted 1,000 from all of these three samples, we would be in the right range for the expected value of these tissues. Fortunately, uh, We've measured the Hounsfield attenuation of these areas before we tried to create our 3D uh, model so that we can appropriately account for the fact that the Hounsfield attenuation has been artificially increased by approximately 1,000 units. So next we're going to go to the ROI menu and select Grow Region 2D 3D segmentation. A window will pop up that says segmentation parameters. For the lower threshold, because I'm going to want to select the bone, I'm going to say about 1,150. And for the upper threshold, I'll keep this at about 3,000. I want to generate a new series with the inside pixel set to 1,000. I'll check this check mark and the outside pixel set to zero. Next I need to give the segmentation algorithm a spot to start so I'm going to click with my left mouse button somewhere on one of these bony structures. I'll click right here and you can see that the selected area turns green. Now there are some disconnected portions that will not turn green but as the algorithm cascades through the multiple stacks of slices, those will be connected as well with our eventual um, a new series that we're going to create. Now once it's all set up, click the Compute button and what will happen is a new series will be generated that has only two values, either 1,000 or 0. With the bony structures being set to 1,000 and everything else being set to 0. Now it should be noted that creation of a separate series is really important for generating high quality uh, 3D models. There is a function under the 3D viewer uh, menu that's called 3D surface rendering and it's very tempting to go directly from your initial series to this 3D surface rendering to try and uh, create your STL file. But uh, take my word for it, it doesn't work very well at all. It's much better to generate an entirely new series <clears throat> like this and then use this essentially bitmapped version to create your STL file. So once we have this separate series with only two values, we'll take this, go to the 3D viewer, select 3D surface rendering. We'll leave the default settings in place and click the OK button. OSIRIX will begin to uh, prepare the 3D surface model. It'll think for a few seconds and then now we have our skull that's displayed. It looks pretty good. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of detail in it. There are some problems that I can see. For example, there are several um, what are called mesh islands or disconnected portions of bones, especially in the nasal cavity, but all in all it's not too bad. Uh, this needs to be cleaned up before it can be 3D printed, but uh, for now we're done with OSIRIX, so we're going to save this as an STL file. 
using this button on the upper right hand uh, corner of the screen called Export 3D SR. Select STL and I'll go to uh, my tutorial folder and I'll call this the skull file and save it. And now I'm done with Osirix. So I'll close that out. And here's my skull file. And it's in STL file format. So now that we have our skull file in STL uh, format, we're, we're not quite ready for 3D printing. As you saw, uh, there are still some areas that need to be fixed. So I'm going to fix these with Blender. Uh, Blender is a free open source software package uh, that's primarily designed for 3D animation. You can download it if you don't already have it uh, going to blender.org slash download. Uh, it's available for Windows, Macintosh, and uh, Linux operating systems. Once you download Blender and install it, uh, you can click on the Blender icon to open it. Left click to remove the splash uh, screen and the default scene will appear. In the default scene there's a cube which uh, we don't really want so I'm going to delete that. If you're using a, a full-size keyboard you can hit the delete key or if you're using a laptop keyboard or a smaller keyboard the X key and then it asks you to confirm that you want to delete this object and you say yes. Next I'm going to import my STL file into Blender. So I'll go to File, Import, STL. And I'll navigate to my skull file that I just saved from Osirix. And I'll double click on that. Blender will think for a few seconds and it will eventually return to that initial scene. So here we are back in the initial scene and I don't see my skull file. So what's going on? Well, um, Blender uses a default measurement called a Blender unit. It's a unit of distance. It's arbitrary. And my skull STL file, uh, all of the units are in millimeters. So one of these little grids represents one Blender unit and when the skull was imported millimeters were mapped onto these Blender units. So this grid is essentially, this square is essentially a one millimeter by one millimeter square. And my skull being on the order of 15 to 20 centimeters or 150 to 200 millimeters in dimension is going to be much larger. So what I need to do is zoom out. I'm going to use my mouse button to scroll back and scroll back and scroll back and scroll back and now my skull comes into view. Uh, it's uh, just so large that uh, I didn't see it with my initial scene. Now the problem we have right here is that the skull is offset from the origin. So what I'm going to do is correct that. The skull is selected um, because it's indicated by an orange rim. If it's not selected you can right mouse click on the skull to select it. I'm going to click Object, Transform, Geometry to Origin. This will move the geometry of the skull to the origin of the scene like so. Now if you have a middle mouse button you can use that to rotate the skull and you can see that there are some problems. First of all there are those mesh islands that we saw when we were still in Osirix. Also the surface of the skull appears to have a very very pixelated type of appearance kind of like a topographic map. We're going to want to smooth that out before we 3D print this.
And finally, at the top of the skull, there's a large hole, which is where the scan uh, was cut off. When they did the scan, they didn't get the very top uh, portion of the skull. So we'll have to correct that as well. So let's start off with uh, the first task, which is removing all those unwanted bone islands. Uh, right now, we're in object mode in Blender. So we want to go to edit mode. So you can do that by going down to this menu and selecting edit mode. And this is the mode that allows you to edit uh, individual portions of the mesh in Blender. What I'm going to do is there's three different things you can edit. You can edit, ver edit vertices, edges, or faces. I'm going to go into vertex edit mode and select a single vertex from anywhere in the skull. It doesn't matter using my right mouse button. How about this one? I'm going to right click on that little vertex and you can see that now that vertex is selected in orange and everything else has become grayed out. Next, I'm going to uh, select everything that is connected to this vertex. You can go to the select menu item in the lower left hand corner and select or and click on the linked choice. Alternatively, you can also just hit control L. And now what has happened is those bone islands that I wanted to get rid of are currently not selected, but every other portion of the skull is. The next step is for me to invert the selection. So again, I can go to select and then and then click on the inverse choice or I can hit control I. And now you can see that those little islands uh, which are scattered little pieces of bone all over the place that we don't want in our final 3D printed model. They're disconnected from the rest of the skull. Now they are selected and we can delete them. So if you have a full-size keyboard you can hit the delete key or you can hit the X key and Blender will ask you what kind of things you want to delete. We want to delete all the vertices in these structures. And boom, now they are all gone. So we've uh, gotten rid of a lot of the, uh, those extraneous little bone islands or mesh islands. Next, we're going to uh, fix the hole at the top of the skull. Uh, this is what's called a manifold defect. This is because the scan was cut off. Let's visualize that a little better here. The CT scan was cut off, so the surface uh, was not included in the scan. And when the surface model was generated by Osirix, it didn't know whether this should be flat or curved or curved out or curved in. So what it did was the software just left it open and there's this gaping hole in our skull surface. Fortunately, fixing this is quite easy. Uh, we're still in edit mode now. Uh, we're going to go to edge selection mode. So you click this button right over here, edge selection mode. And zoom in a little bit and we can see the edge that's open. Hold the alt key down and left uh, correction right click on one of these edges abutting the hole and you'll see that the entire edge of this hole has been selected. We're now going to create a face over this hole. Uh, and what you do is hit the F key for face. And there we go. We have a new face that's been added. Now, this face is pretty complicated. You can see that there are a lot of edges, uh, a lot of jagged edges around this. And uh, so this is a, a polygon, but it's a very complicated polygon. And it'll be a little difficult for the software to handle this uh, for some of the things we're going to plan to do in the, in the future. So I'm going to convert this complicated polygon into triangles by uh, going to Mesh, Faces,
triangulate faces right here. Or you can hit the Control T button. And you can see that now what's happened is uh, this has been converted into a bunch of triangles. <clears throat> okay. Now, some of these triangles are actually quite large, uh, so we don't necessarily want them to be this big. It would be nice if they were subdivided. Uh, and I can do that by hitting the W key and selecting Subdivide and Smooth. And this will divide all of these triangles into smaller triangles and uh, apply a, a smoothing algorithm. So that's not bad. Now there's a couple of these that are still fairly large that could probably be made a bit smaller so I'm going to go to face selection mode, hit the A key to unselect everything and I'm going to uh, select these with the right mouse button, I'll hold down the shift key And let's say if I wanted to just subdivide those, I can hit W and subdivide them again. And you can see that now the triangles are getting smaller. Okay, well, that's all well and good. Uh, so we've closed up the hole, but uh, there's still the issue of the very pixelated type of appearance of the skull. I'm going to go back to object mode right now just so that I can illustrate that. You can see that the skull surface, although from far away it looks okay, but when you get in really close you can see that the skull surface is very, very uh, pixelated and um, that will be apparent if we do a high resolution 3D print. So we're going to get rid of that by doing a smoothing uh, function on this skull. I'm going to go back to edit mode and I'm going to select everything in the model. So I'm going to hit the A key to select all. A key toggles between selecting all and selecting nothing. So uh, hit it, you might have to hit it once or twice, but it goes between selecting all and selecting nothing. So I'm going to say select all. First of all, I want to make sure that everything here is a triangle because the smoothing algorithm doesn't work very well with uh, complex polygons. So I'll go to Mesh, Faces, and Triangulate Faces, or you can just hit the Control T, and that will convert everything to a triangle that isn't already. Uh, and now I'm going to go back to Object Mode. And from here, I'm going to apply a smoothing algorithm to the entire mesh. And to do that, I'll go to this uh, these uh, tabs on the right. And what I want to do is go to this tab over here that has a wrench in it. And this will show the modifiers uh, tool, tool panel. And modifiers are essentially functions that you can apply to a 3D model. There are a variety of functions that are available in Blender and you can do some really amazing things with them. But for today, I'm going to go to Add Modifier and select Smooth. Uh, I do not want to select the Laplacian Smooth modifier. I want the regular Smooth modifier, which is here. I'm going to left click on that and uh, I'll leave the default settings, but what will happen is Blender asks you how many times you want to repeat this algorithm. And you can click on this little arrow here to increase the number of repeats that you're doing. And you can see in real time what kind of an effect that has on the surface of the model. It's really smoothing out. You can still see some of the original uh, pixelated uh, appearance, but uh, I found that using a value of 20 works pretty well for this model. And there we go. Most of our pixelation is now gone. Uh, so this modifier is, is shown basically in preview mode. We haven't actually applied it to our digital model, so I'm going to click the Apply button. And now our 
smooth algorithm has been applied to our skull and our skull looks a lot better. And at this point we are ready to export it to STL again. So I'm going to go to the file menu, select export STL and I'll navigate back to my uh, original folder and my uh, file was called skull file STL and now I'm going to call this skull file let's say corrected and click export and our skull file uh, which has been fixed we've smoothed it out we've removed the mesh islands and we have uh, closed the hole that was on the top of the head because the scan cut it off. Uh, and uh, so now that's in this uh, new file called skull file corrected. Now there was one thing that I forgot to do. Uh, you'll remember that when we initially opened up this file, the skull was oriented in a um, in a strange orientation. And if you go to the view menu and you select uh, front, you can see that we're actually looking at the top of the uh, uh, the skull. So one thing that we can do, if, if you go to view and select top, we're looking at the back and I'd like to rotate this uh, by about 180 degrees on the x-axis. So this is a quick fix. What we do is uh, with the skull selected, it's outlined in orange, hit the R key that's for rotate, hit the X key to say the X axis and type in 180 for 180 degrees and hit the enter or return key. And now we've just rotated the skull at 180 degrees on the X axis. And uh, so now I'm going to save that again. I'm going to go from file export to STL and I'm going to overwrite that skull file corrected that I just created because I've created another one now uh, in an appropriate uh, orientation. Next, I'm going to uh, open up Mesh Mixer. If you don't have Mesh Mixer, you can download it for free. It's a free software program that's published by Autodesk, which is a big um, software engineering software development company. Uh, Mesh Mixer is available in Macintosh, Windows, and uh, Linux uh, distributions. So I'm going to open up Mesh Mixer and select the import button and select my new skull file corrected.stl and there's my skull file that I've just uh, created uh, now mesh mixer has a variety of really nice auto um, uh, automatic mesh correction features and I'm going to check this uh, before I 3d print it by going to the analysis button over here on the left and selecting inspector and what this does is it examines this uh, STL file for any problems and if there were problems I would see blue pink or red lines that are pointing to the individual issues with the mesh but it looks like we've done a pretty good job and corrected everything in blender so there are no uh, defects with the mesh so inspector is not really showing any problems which is great so we're done with that um, our model is ready to go so I'm gonna go ahead and quit mesh mixer <clears throat> and here it is um, ready for 3d printing and this is what the model looks like when it's been 3d printed in this case I've scaled down by 50 percent to save on material cost but you can see that there is still incredible detail and realism. I hope you find this tutorial helpful in creating your own medical and anatomic models using 3D printing. Please stay tuned for my next tutorial on using free open source software program uh, 3D Slicer to create medical models for Windows and Linux platforms. If you are creating your own 3D printed medical models, 
please consider sharing those models and your advice on embodied.com. Uh, you can register for free. Uh, there are files in the file vault that you can download for free and 3D print yourself. Additionally, you can uh, ask questions or um, offer suggestions in the forums where uh, like-minded members will help each other to uh, 3D print medical uh, models and also you can uh, read interesting blog articles in the uh, blog section. Thank you very much. I hope you had a really good time learning about 3D printed uh, medical models and uh, how they can be created with the OSIRIX uh, software program. Uh, happy 3D printing!